Okay, thank you for joining us, everybody. Welcome to www.turndogmillionaire.com. I have Jacob today from The Lazy Camper. I came across Jacob via the Virgin Media Pioneers, and I was lucky enough to meet with him about a week ago now because we live pretty much next door. I live in Halifax and he lives in Huddersfield, so it's rare to meet a fellow local um, in the entrepreneur game. So, welcome, Jacob. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much, Jack. Cheers. And we're going to start things off, if you would, um, by just having you give a quick overview of who you are and what Lazy Camper is. Sure. So uh, I'm Jacob Hill. I'm 19. I'm in my first year at university at the University of Huddersfield, and I run a business called The Lazy Camper. Uh, the Lazy Camper, that's all that, is a, a complete outdoors kit with everything needed in one bag from 59.99. So it's a fest. It, it's perfect for festivals, really. So it's everything you need to camp at a festival for 60 quid basically so it's something which is obviously great for me because i'm passionate about going to festivals and i'm also passionate about business so. fantastic so tell us about how the idea came about you told me um, last week and it was one of those typical entrepreneur yeah. moments um so yeah tell us about that so i was at leeds festival last year i just worked all summer to buy my ticket for leeds festival and all my camping equipment which i bought from a supermarket the night before I still managed to spend more than £60, by the way, and uh, the average person does spend about £140 on their camping equipment. I um, I were at a festival, and it was at Leeds Festival, and it was raining on the first night, and it was only a little bit of rain, so I was spitting of rain, and I fell asleep in my tent, and uh, I woke up I woke up in the tent, and the everything was underwater. I had my phone, keys, wallet, under probably about a couple of inches of water, and I was just like, really? So that was my phone ruined, all the money had turned to mush inside my wallet. I had to go and buy another tent with said money uh, from the festival, and they were charging an arm and a leg on site. So it was it was all a bit, you know, it was a bit of a shame, really. But then I thought, well, if this is a problem for me, it's going to be a problem for a few other people. Why not offer them an option where they can have everything they need in one bag for a great price and then be responsible in terms of disposing of the product as well? So, you know, because most people leave them there, set them on fire. Instead, we'll go ahead and recycle them for people, so it's the best way to do it. Yeah, we'll come back to that in a minute, because you've got a couple yeah. of cool ideas about how to do recycling. Are there any other people doing this? Because it just seems like such an obvious thing, really. I'm sure there'll be people watching this who have been to festivals or just gone camping and yeah. spent a great deal more than £60, or at very least um, spent very little money and, like you say, have it all go to pot, so... Or even must just be shop around, this. like yeah, there's, a, there's a, there is about three or four similar products on the market. So you know, we we think how can we gain the most market share? How can we you know be better than our competition? And looking at all the competition, this is me blowing our own trumpet. We've ensured we've had the best quality kit, and we've ensured we've had the most items in the kit at the lowest price. But don't take my word for it. We're the only organisation endorsed by the Scouting Association, so that's the level of quality our products are at. You get more products in the kit and they are at the best price and we're obviously the only ones that are spending a lot of money on marketing now so we want to get out there and get to the festivals and tell people what this product's about you know it's, it's a lifestyle product it's making it easier for people at a good price at great quality stuff um i'm hoping you know the lazy camper is gonna well we are looking at going global at the moment but that's obviously something we can talk about in a bit but hmm. should be something people want to get involved with i hope so yeah, we you talked a little bit about the markets there. Who exactly are you um, targeting? Is it simply the festival goers, or do you see other people who can benefit from this? Uh, this is our first eight months of trading. Well, we've only got the stock in a month and a bit ago. Uh, we're going to start off with festivals all over the world. Just start with festivals, get a base market in every country, doing it that way, and then grow it upwards from there. So we're going to go from um, festivals to people might go fishing, sporting, general outdoors, family packs. And then the product itself doesn't have to stay in camping. It can go towards a lazy rock climber or lazy cyclist, and it's got everything you need for rock climbing or cycling in one bag from X amount of pounds. It's it's making outdoor activities convenient for novice or people who are want something that is good enough and something that is to a quality. That's a good starter kit, really. Fantastic. And um Tell us about the brand. Uh, how did you come about the name? And I'm a big fan of the design. It's very um, friendly, sort of cartoony. It's 
it's easy on the eyes. So how did, did you design that yourself or did you involve no, uh, Well, I had a general idea of what I wanted. I realised I wanted the A to be incorporated for Lazy and Camper to create an icon. Uh, but I look at brands like Innocent Smoothies and Virgin who've got this strong ongoing continuity brand. Virgin have the strong ongoing brand, but they're becoming, they've got a very corporate brand. I know it's very relaxed, but it's still a large corporation. Whilst Innocent Smoothies have a very happy, friendly brand that you feel you can ring up and stuff like that so we want the mix of both of the the world renowned and then also the friendly image so that's where the list is kind of came about i wanted to have something which summed up a, a, an active leisure like outdoors activity um but also call people like call it lazy so people know that it's convenient in some way or it's I don't want people taking offence to the name. I know no one has. Everyone just laughs it off in jest. And that's the whole point of the product. It's a laugh product. It's something you can enjoy. It's a casual. We're not going to hide behind suits and large corporations and stuff like that. So we want Lazy Cabin to be a fun brand. Let people know that I'm in my bedroom right now. And that's where the business runs from. It runs from students. It's made by students. And it's not only just for students, but they're a large part of our target market at the moment. Fantastic. And... Um... There's obviously a good story behind the brand. Um, we mentioned earlier about you've got some techniques to kind of get things recycling. What What is part of the story? Is it very much sort of ethical? Are you trying to do things in a way that's um, sort of pro energy and kind of really connecting with this young market and young society that yeah. we're all part of? Well, we've become a more conscious, where the more conscious generation it started in 1966 with the bra burning and all that and it's just gone on and on to now it's the point where everyone at this age is honestly caring about the environment they care about the world what the next generation are going to have to live with uh from our mistakes and waste i i don't want to leave a bad mark behind i don't want to be judged for you know making the world a worse place it needs to be made better if everyone tried to make the world better then you know we'd have a great world wouldn't we so that's the idea of the lazy camper. We want to be able to really attack the green side and make sure we're really going for it. So we're going to offer ways where people, once they finish with the kits, they're more than welcome to take them. Some people get confused with the price so much that they think it's a rental. I'm like, no, it's yours to keep. <laughs> so, but we, it is theirs to keep, but we've still got some responsibility on how they dispose of it. So we'll encourage people after festivals that we work with to hand in their kits if they want. If they're not going to use them again, if they're just going to set them on fire or if they're just going to trash them and cut them up, at least hand in whatever's left over. Try not to set them on fire if you can. Put them in a bag, hand them in, and then, like, we'll just take – we'll give you, five like, five to ten pounds off your next purchase with our business just for tidying up a little bit. And then we'll also try and get other communities of people helping us pack tents up, actually waste tents that people have actually just left out, not just lazy camper tents, any tents at festivals – We'll pack them, we'll clean them, we'll even recycle them, try reuse them, um, try restitch them and make new tents out of them. Like that's another range that we're looking at down the line. Or we'll clean them, send them to scouts, send them to homeless charities, send them to people who need these tents, who need temporary accommodation, people in third world countries, people all over the world. A tent is a great form of temporary accommodation and it, it, you know, it, it offers shelter, it offers warmth, it can can do so much so that's why it's more important that people get involved and actually give up the tents after they've used them rather than just set them on fire as i say or burn them or fill them with all sorts of rubbish and you know uh, deodorant cans filling them with deodorant cans and setting them on fire it's an amazing sight to see i'm not going to deny it but don't do it and just you know don't waste tents that's that's my philosophy is that going to be the uh, future tagline? Don't waste tents. Yeah, tents. don't waste tents. That's clever. That could be the charity side of the business. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's obviously a lot of reach there. There's um, a lot of diversification. We'll come back to that in a minute about the future. Um, after speaking to you the other week, there's a lot of things where this could go. So I suppose one of the big things is how are you going to get this message about? Because it's a very consumer-based product. It's something that could help potentially thousands, you know, worldwide, you know, millions of people in various different ways. How are you going to get message out? What are, what are the plans in from the sort of communicating the marketing side? So what we're doing is we're working closer with a lot of large brands and it's amazing that all these brands are actually supporting us. Uh, Virgin, for example, they're a great brand. Uh, they've helped us. They've, it started off with being a part of Virgin Media Pioneers, which has then gone to Virgin Unite, which is a US side of the business. And the Virgin Media Company in the UK are still offering advice to us. This is just growing and growing. It's ridiculous. It's um, So we've got the US market. We've got California market now. 
uh, we're looking at uh, South Africa and Australia through one of the guys, and then we ended up setting our own, a, a separate branch up in Ireland uh, to have like a warehouse space over there and its own marketing and everything like that. I mean, Ireland doesn't have a larger festival scene, but you know, the warehouse space we're using is part of my, uh, someone we know who's got an animal sanctuary. So the fact that we're renting, we're converting one of their old barns into a warehouse is providing more money to their sanctuary. It's providing more business to them and hopefully more attention. Getting out there, telling the world about it, it it's difficult. I mean, three million people go to festivals in the UK. So that's like, imagine that across the world. California is four or five times bigger than the UK. South Africa is four or five, maybe even ten times bigger than California. And then Australia is probably along the same lines as that. So it's just like, the level that we're going to have to work at to keep this going, I can see us, you know, getting a team going soon and getting more and more people on board. It just depends, you know, how it all goes back to the, the price we buy it in at, um, the ethics we have behind it. Because if our price doesn't match our ethic, then I'm, I'm not going to go for it. I'd rather, I want the, what's best for our customers, but I also want, you know, what's best for the people who produce the kits, what's best for the end use of the kit and stuff like that. So if it means paying a little bit more, it's worth it. And to be fair, the price we sell them at, we, we don't think it is, we think it's a great price as it is anyway. So we're hoping, you know, if we can bring that down by any margin and still keep the same quality and the same ethics, then, you know, it's a bonus all around. So we'll just see how that goes, I think. Excellent. Um, it's, it's good to hear because it's something I talk about a great deal, um, having core values and having something that's, you know, based around the brand and, you know, actually yeah, sticking journey. to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually sticking I to hope, it. I mean, I'm hoping, you know, this is this is the first business for me. I'm hoping it's going to be one of 300 like Virgin has. And I'm hoping that throughout the whole brand of whatever I go into, that the core businesses, like let's say I'm not as in, let's say someone manages the Lazy Camper and they have a lot of executive rights and stuff further down the line, maybe three or five years, you never know. I'd expect them to stick with that, them core values as well. You know, it's everything, everything we do at every level. Our directors, our investors, our warehouse, our production, our export is all down to the right ethics and the right attitude. If no one has a lazy camper, we wouldn't work with them. So <laughs> it's a bit, bit cutthroat. But. It leads perfectly to my next question, which is how much of Jacob is in the lazy camper brand? I mean, you, you pretty much answered it there, but how much have you actually put yourself in the vision and the core values? And what um, you say, if if everything goes according to plan in a couple of years time, you could have many employees ranging across the world. Are you, are you a little worried about things growing too big? Uh, what, because obviously that's always a bit of a worry for an entrepreneur. It's one thing when you can control everything, but when you've got something like you say about has global reach, could reach potentially millions. Are you worried about that idea of it becoming above you eventually? Um, as long as there's always the base values there, as long as the customer is always getting the best and it's always in the interest of the customer, the suppliers, the investors, as long as all these people are being looked after, I think that's that's all. Any If I could make a business that goes beyond me, that's my success. That's the idea that no matter what happens to me, something I've made will always go on. And that in its own right is exciting. I'm just like, that. that's what I want. Um, I want to go global with the Lazy Camper. Then I want global products to come off that and then I want, I'd love to be a, a worldwide recognized brand and I, I've got drive to do it and I'm starting to make the contacts. I just need to find, you know, the right businesses that need for them and keep the customer service going. And, you know, I couldn't do all this without the support of customers, friends, family, people who just believe in the young entrepreneur. That is that they're the people that you need to go for and need to work with. They're the ones that support you and help you go worldwide. I mean, the power of the internet has made the world smaller, but, there's only so much internet can do and if it wasn't for people and companies like Virgin and talks at these places that I do and visit and if I didn't take every opportunity I don't think I'd be able to meet these people that can take the brand like Global and that can help the Lazy Camper so no I'm not, not worried I'm, I'm excited if anything and I'll keep going until uh, I'm out of steam but we'll, hopefully that'll be a long long way <laughs> <laughs> a few years down the line yet well we, yeah. we talked quite a bit about it when we met up um about a week ago about the idea of a brand story and everything and it's all about creating something that is beyond you isn't it it's yeah. something that someone else can pick up and still very much get the idea of your brand and your ethos and um extend that reach across everybody so it's Definitely. a good outlook to have yeah um, you've also just recently gone on to a couple of things um you've just done a bit of a campaign on 
uh, PPC, trying yeah. to improve your SEO side of things, the dreaded SEO. It's yeah. a dirty word, <laughs> but it's something we all need. And you've also, yeah. um, you just told me the other day, put the product up on eBay, which is a bit yeah. of a something that we were, we were talking about, wasn't it? It seems so obvious to do. And, um, it should be obvious. Yeah. So tell us about that. Like, are you hoping that's going to have a massive impact? Uh, well, I didn't, I didn't realise, you know, we put every individual component of the product on eBay. So we didn't put the full product on eBay. And I'm like, only because I was worried about losing control. And I thought if people go to eBay, they can always come to the Lazy Camper. But that's not the case. If they're on eBay, they're on eBay because they trust eBay and they use eBay's systems and eBay's promotion. So if we get on the back of eBay's promotion, such as, I mean, I've never paid so much to put a product online. I've clicked every category, every box. I've uploaded as many photos as possible. We spent about £17 on getting the product on eBay before they even take any money out from the kits Jeez. for everyone we sell. Uh, which compared to spending 40p of products normally, £17 is quite a quite a large amount. But yeah. I'm hoping it's part of the long-term plan. It should be good for reach. And uh, yeah. it was like you were saying, it's just kind of good to get the word out there. Yeah, I mean, if we get a sale from eBay, those people are going to find a laser camper, they're going to get the laser camper, and then they're going to you know, go on about, well, this is a great product. Where else can I buy it? What else can I do? Tell the friends, tell the family, and just keep... Keep going that way. We we we're going to do everything we can to retain our customers directly, um, no matter how we sell the kits. As long as we get to the end user uh, somehow, even through our social media, even through people calling us, they can call us any time of day. I'm on my mobile. I've said, you know, it's not not long term, isn't that? But I mean, to start with, I'm saying I'm setting up the business. If you are at a festival, you're a bit drunk and you can't set up your tent at three o'clock in the morning, give me a call. I'll help where I can, but don't expect the best customer service at that time. But still, <laughs> it's still you know it's still trying to help where we can. If we can help one person with their tent, they might tell ten people and say, "I bought off these people, and they helped me put my tent up on over the phone." So you never know. You never know. Fantastic. Well, what so what's the plan over the next few months? Um, you obviously face a great deal of challenges. There's some competitors out there. In it, I suppose. Anybody who's watching this, they might not know, but anyone who lives in England will know the weather we've been having recently. It's been an absolute <laughs> washout. This is going to be the best and worst thing, I suppose, for you from a festival point of view, because I don't know, some people will go through about five tenths, I feel, this summer with this weather. If they go yeah, to I festivals. guess so. It's a bit yeah. of a nightmare. Um, but obviously, you've obviously got your eye on the festivals of now. But yeah. What about the next few months? Because are you starting to think about next year already and different markets yeah. and different things? What's what's the plan over the next couple of months? Uh, the plan over the next couple of months is become more efficient. This is our first year. We've got 500 kits in and 500 is not very hard to sell. We've, all, we've almost sold out um, in the UK just from one PPC campaign where you appear to be at the top of Google. Uh, we get something like 200,000 searches a month, uh, which is great. So 500 sells very easy. The issue is now is to make the business more efficient so that, let's say, when it's being packaged, it's all packaged in one place. Because mm. uh, we paid four and a half thousand pounds last year on import of 500 kits. If we were to import 5,000, we'd only pay two grand this year because of our efficiency. Mm. So it's a lot, we're getting 10 times as much for half the price, um, which is amazing. Um, so we're going to have, we're going to have Laser Camper pre packed in boxes now rather than assembling it ourselves in the UK. Uh, so it'll all be pre-packed in the boxes with our own branding on with the contents on so that we can sell business to business, which is another plan for next year. We also want to beat seasonal demand, so we're going to tackle global markets so that we're never at mercy of the UK season only, that we're at mercy of California, who we all know has got like amazing summer. Um, South Africa, who's like hardly, well, when it rains, it rains heavily, but it doesn't do it very often. Uh, Australia, not much rain. Ireland, just as much rain as England, but still, you know, it's still another market. It's still more festivals. It's still easier for the customer to collect. So that's the idea behind the Lazy Camper. We're going to get into as many businesses as possible. I've just, um, I'm going to start at Asda, actually. I've just found uh, the contact information for 40 Asdas in Yorkshire. So what I'm going to do is they offer a, a local suppliers campaign where they, 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 they aim to source from local suppliers. And as I'm a local supplier... I'm going to ring all 40 stores, ask to speak to the managers and see if they'll want to buy 10, 20, 50 kits off us to start with. We'll start the marketing. We'll, they'll get great press from it. If the product sells well, then the Yorkshire, whole of Yorkshire might actually start buying into it from Asda. Then 
you know, the north of the UK Asda, then the south of UK, then you've got the whole UK market of Asda buying from us. So it just depends. It might work, it might not, but I'm going to definitely ring round and email all the managers. And uh, that's 40 odd managers that need to say no to me. So I don't think I'm going to be that unlucky. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Fantastic. Well, I urge everybody who's watching this to um, click below and have a check out the Lazy Camper website. And if you're going to a festival, um, get yourself one before they sell out because I think um, in another week or two they will all be gone. And yeah. keep a very close eye on the story of Lazy Camper. Um, and if you are watching this on YouTube or anywhere else, make sure you click through to my website and then all the links are going to be below this video. So before we finish things up, Jacob, uh, I want to just ask you one or two final things. First of all, you're quite heavily involved in the Virgin Media Pioneers campaign. They've just recently... Um, um, set up the new website it's looking very clean very good any entrepreneur in England should be on there it's it's a given it's if you've got a good yeah. mind get on there but um, tell us about how you've been involved with that and what opportunities that's created for you so Pioneers is an online platform for young entrepreneurs to engage with each other in a like-minded community I've taken the opportunity to like just take everything they give you uh, they, they, they're there to support you they hand out all sorts of competitions opportunities Job, even jobs, there's like jobs going where you can like get apprenticeships and everything with other businesses and other things. So it depends what you're looking for. Uh, I became their regional uh, representative, so I do all of Yorkshire for the pioneers. I promote and uh, market for those guys. Uh, I'm also organising an event on Friday the 27th of July, which all entrepreneurs are welcome to. If you're thinking of setting up a business, just uh, Royal Armour's leads. You can add me up on Twitter anyway. It's the Lazy Jacob. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, also, Pioneers gave me the opportunity to be on Britain's Got Talent's TV ad. Uh, I was the guy doing the coin trick. I don't think I have a coin. Oh, yeah, I do. If any of your viewers can see, uh, it's a coin where I get it, I hold it, it goes in that hand, disappears and comes to that hand. It's not great, but I got to be on the Britain's Got Talent adverts with that. I got uh, 1,500 quid to do that, and that's gone into the business. And then uh, I also, opportunity of all opportunities, got to pitch to Sir Richard Branson, uh, they finalised me as one of the eight businesses that uh, get through to the final and then we had to gain the most votes to be in the top four and the top four got to pitch and the top eight got to go to his house. So everyone got to go to his house but we came first place and got to pitch last, which was an amazing opportunity. So Virgin Media Pioneers is the way forward for any young entrepreneur or anyone just wanting to follow entrepreneurs or get inspiration for anything. I mean, anything. If you want to be a, a write a book, start a pottery business or even find employment opportunities just check out virgin media pioneers at virginmediapioneers.com definitely i can certainly vouch for that it's something i've been getting involved in in the last month or two and i can't wait for my first pioneers event on the 27th i'm excited <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Really and I'll just like to say, this is how sad I am. I was blown away by that magic trick when he showed me in the really? in the, <laughs> the other week. I asked him to do it about three times. So simple for you, but little things uh, impress me. <laughs> so Brilliant. finally, um, in three words, please describe the Lazy Camper brand. Okay, quality definitely. Convenience says it for itself and then affordability the three things that what the lazy camper should be what any business that we go into the future as long as we have a high quality product we're convenient and we offer the best customer service and the price is right i i don't see why people you know wouldn't want it i'm hoping they would i'm hoping they get on board with this story and they become part of the lazy camper story themselves so i hope people can uh, join us Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining um, me, Jacob. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Viewer. Um, like I said, please click through to the site if you're watching this on YouTube or anywhere else and check out all the links that I'll be putting below, Jacob's Twitter and his website and all various other things. Check them out and make sure you keep a keen eye on this because this could be huge in a year or two. So you've heard it here first. So <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Thanks, Matt. Cheers. Cheers.